Hello and this lesson is going to be on fractional distillation from the C7 topic. So to start with I would like you to have a go at these questions based on last lesson's work. So pause the video now and welcome back. So a hydrocarbon is a compound that's made of hydrogen and carbon only. The general formula of alkanes <clears throat> is Cn H2n plus 2, where n can be any number. The conditions required for crude oil to form are a high temperature, high pressure and no oxygen. And finally, the type of resource oil is, is a finite resource, sometimes <coughs> referred to as non-renewable. So as I said, fractional distillation is what we are going to be um, looking at today of crude oil. And that is by the end of this session, you should be able to describe how crude oil is separated. You should be able to describe some functions or uses of the fractions produced and start to create links between the boiling point and the size of the hydrocarbons in each fraction. So just a quick recap, um, last lesson we said that crude oil is a mixture and it's a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. Now I'm showing you a couple of diagrams of some hydrocarbons and the each one or each different type of hydrocarbon um, has a different boiling point. Now longer hydrocarbons like these two at the top have got higher boiling points than shorter ones like these two at the bottom and so this is because those red dotted lines that you see are forces between the molecules now we refer to those as intermolecular forces <clears throat> that just means between molecules and on longer chain and I mean like carbon chain, um, hydrocarbons, there are more intermolecular forces than there are in the shorter ones. And that makes them have a higher boiling point. But enough for that for now, that will be in a future lesson. Now crude oil on its own is not very useful because it's just a mixture of loads of different hydrocarbons all with different lengths. So we need to be able to separate it. So we do something called fractional distillation. Now distillation should be familiar to you from year 10 and it's where we can separate out mixtures of substances that have a different boiling point. And we refer to this one as fractional distillation because we get lots of small parts of crude oil separated so we get in fractions of it now in real life this takes place in a fractionating column or tower like the photograph on the screen on the left and they are as tall as if not taller than the tower block in school so a fractionating tower is where this happens there's a diagram of one on the right hand side so each fraction produced contains hydrocarbons with a similar number of carbon atoms and you need to learn the stages of fractional distillation so first of all the crude oil that's straight from the ground is heated obviously in this heater or furnace and when that gets heated the hydrocarbons inside start to boil and turn into a gas and so then they evaporate. Now the vapours or gases pass into here which is the fractionating tower or fractionating column and because they are hot they begin to rise to the gases up the column. Now I'd just like to point out that the bottom of this tower is much hotter than the top it's very cool up here. So as the gases rise up the column, hot at the bottom, cold at the top, 
they begin to cool down and they will then condense when they reach their particular boiling point. So just a reminder that condense means that they will turn back into a liquid. So when they turn back into a liquid, those droplets collect and then can be removed from the fractionating tower here on this right hand side. Very long hydrocarbons, remember, have the higher boiling point, so they're going to be removed at the bottom. But the very short hydrocarbons, some of them, they never reach their boiling point, so rise straight up to the top and don't condense, so they get removed as gases right at the top there. Now the uses of the fractions is very varied but the most common use is as a fuel so petrol and diesel but also kerosene is produced and kerosene is aviation or jet fuel but we can also get camping gas so those are said that go right to the top and don't even turn back into a liquid they collect as gases and so that we can use those as camping gas but then we have got longer ones that turn into fuel oil for ships and also very heavy ones, long ones at the bottom and they get turned into tar. Another name for tar fraction is bitumen. Some chemicals are used as a feedstock for the petroleum or the petrochemical or the pharmaceutical industry. And a feedstock just means a chemical that's used to make other chemicals, such as solvents, detergents and polymers. Now what I'd like you to do is think about how you could describe the steps involved in the fractional distillation of crude oil. So think about what we have to do to the oil and then what happens as a result of that. And a question like this would be worth three marks. So in order to answer this, what you might want to do is either pause the video and give you some time to think. And if you're still not quite sure, you might want to re-watch the description I gave of fractional distillation and note down what you think are the important steps that happen in that stage. So I'd like you to pause or rewind the video now and welcome back. Let's see if we agree on the type of answer of the steps involved in fractional distillation. Well, the first thing you need to point out is that the crude oil is heated and it's heated to produce gases or vapours when they reach their boiling points. The second point to point out is that the gases then rise up the column of the fractionating tower and will condense and the last bit of the mark is that they will all condense at different temperatures and then that allows us to separate out the lengths or different lengths of the molecules per fraction. Shorter ones collect at the top the longer hydrocarbon molecules collect at the bottom because they have got higher boiling points. Thank you for listening and please complete the questions in your notebook. Thank you.